none of us have a crystal ball. We can't see the future, but based on experience, analysis, and research, we can try to determine what the biggest gaming hits will be in 2024. After presenting you hundreds of games across a multitude of genres, these are my picks for the top 10 games I think will blow up big. Also, exercise for you, write your top 10 predictions below. Let's see who ends up more right. It's easy to come after the fact, let's test your seeing eye. In no particular order, the first big hitter is Avowed. This is a first-person fantasy RPG from Obsidian Entertainment, and it kind of feels like Obsidian's response to Skyrim, or the longevity of Skyrim's success. Bethesda has been making these first-person RPGs for a long time, and they even employed Obsidian Entertainment one time to make Fallout New Vegas, but for whatever reason, they were never called back. It's especially weird considering how much of a success New Vegas was. Anyway, Obsidian Entertainment has been making their own stuff recently, most notably in this context, The Outer Worlds. And of course they're working on The Outer Worlds too, but first it's gonna be Avowed, which is set for a 2024 release. We have recently seen a lot more gameplay. They showed off a much more extensive gameplay demonstration, which shows dual wielding wands, a lot of combat and weaponry, various types of enemies, dialogue and questing. So we've seen a decent amount of the game so far. Also, it is set on Eora, the same universe as Pillars of Eternity. So it's kind of like Pillars of Eternity, but first person. So overall, Avowed is looking like a massive game that a lot of people are anticipating and they're actually showing off some real gameplay. So it seems like there's a huge amount of promise here and everyone is looking forward to it. Could Avowed actually be the Skyrim killer? Of course, nothing is really gonna kill Skyrim. Uh, not even Elder Scrolls 6 will kill Skyrim. I mean, I'm still playing Morrowind every now and then. But could this be a real competitor to Bethesda's fantasy first-person RPGs? Especially considering the so-so reception of Starfield, now would be a good time to step into Bethesda's territory. And Avowed seems like it's got everything going for it, especially since Obsidian Entertainment was acquired by Microsoft, and now it's an Xbox Game Studios game, so they have a lot of backing, a lot of promise, they've had experience making these kind of games, and it looks like they're going for the jugular. Then the sequel to one of the best city building games of the last decade, Frostpunk 2. This is the next iteration of the survival city builder set in a post-apocalyptic frozen wasteland. Earth has been ravaged by this disastrous blizzard and everyone now lives in a kind of a permafrost. In the harsh icy wasteland, a civilization emerges, built around a central pillar of heating and you have to manage this city with all its woes, not only to survive the harsh environment, but also the complicated nature of humans with laws and ethics and questions and situations being pulled into question. Now, we haven't seen a lot of gameplay of Frostpunk 2 yet, but it has a lot to live up to. The first game, massively successful. And Frostpunk 2 is set for a 2024 release window, and they've shown a little bit here and there, but nothing too heavy. We've seen some clips, some snippets of the gameplay, and it seems to be coming together, and generally the cities this time around seem a lot more sprawling. But also, will Frostpunk 2 be able to bring everything Frostpunk 1 has already added with the DLCs and updates over the years, especially with like the world exploration, and also optimization is a concern. Frostpunk 1 wasn't necessarily the most optimized game on every system, and it could get kinda laggy at times. There's a lot of experience from 11-bit studios, and Frostpunk 2 seems to be shaping up to be what it should be. But there are, of course, concerns. Because Frostpunk 1 continues to be a success. So if Frostpunk 2 doesn't live up to what people are expecting it to be, like, it has to be significantly better than Frostpunk 1. Because otherwise, people would just go play Frostpunk 1. You could have a sort of City Skylines 2 situation where the sequel is not living up to the game that already exists, so people just go back to the first game. 
Now, City Skylines 2 might pull itself back over the next few years, but Frostpunk 2 may not have that opportunity because they didn't dominate quite as hard as City Skylines in the first place. Generally speaking, though, Frostpunk 2 looks great so far. We're waiting to see more, but either way, I do expect Frostpunk 2 to make it and become one of the biggest hitters of the year. Then, of course, everyone asks for it, and that's why it's here. Mana Lords. Yes, yes, Mana Lords is one of the most anticipated games of 2024. And it's even got a fixed release date, which, remember, release dates can change. It's not a guarantee. But right now, it is set for the 26th of April 2024, so a couple months away from when I'm making this video. And Mana Lords is this fantastic game, a strategy game, with city building set in a medieval world and there's large-scale tactical battles and the city building isn't just an aside it's like a city builder and there's economic simulations and across the map there's trading and diplomacy and of course all the wars and battles but the biggest point i found about mana lords is last year there was a free demo and i played it on this channel and the optimization was insane considering how good the game looked you could see every blade of grass, and yet somehow I was getting solid 60 frames a second. And I don't know how they did it, the developers are called Slavic Magic, but the game looks amazing. The city building demo from last year played super smooth and it felt like a proper survival-esque city builder. And we're just waiting to see if all the military aspects comes together in the final full version of the game, which we will be getting soon if they stick to their promise. So yes, Mana Lords is either going to be one of the biggest hits of 2024 or one of the biggest disappointments. They just recently posted that it had 2 million wish lists on Steam. So <laughs> there's a lot of hype for this game and it really, really, really needs to deliver. It just feels like it's taking so many popular games of the past to kind of a bit of Total War, a bit of Banished, a bit of all of these successful games over the years and pulling it all together and so far it seems like it's gelling very well it seems like a very cohesive idea and execution of everything i mean you'd think full-on city building plus full-on military strategy generally it's quite difficult to have them both fully fleshed out without one distracting or sacrificing from the other. But if anyone can do it this year, it's probably going to be Mana Lords. So we'll keep an eye on this one, and we'll see what happens in April. Next up we've got the biggest RPG of the year, Fable. Now, Fable 4 technically, but it's just called Fable, is uh, had some mixed receptions based on the footage shown off so far. Mostly it's been cinematic footage, and no, it's not really gameplay. We've seen like the main character throw a fireball at a bandit, but that, that didn't really look like gameplay. There's no UI, there's no controls. It might as well just be a cinematic. Overall, it looks great, but a big contention is sort of expectations. Fable in the past has been a pretty serious kind of RPG, but this new Fable is sort of going the parody route. And of course, I know if you've looked up Fable at all, you've seen people mention, oh, the main character is, or the whole thing just seems like it's not good. But I think that's an expectation problem. So, for example, the main character is not traditionally beautiful, we could say. The game is aware of this. The trailer has this reveal of the character where the character's walking away from us and then turns around and they do a silly face towards the camera. Obviously, the look of the character is intentional to be part of the humor and the parody of this fable. That's why they've got comedian Richard Ayoade as one of the presenters and characters in the latest trailer, because this whole thing is going for the jokey parody of a fantasy world. And I think people looking for a serious RPG might not be into that, or they might just have been expecting a serious RPG, then they see the trailer and they're, they're like, what, what is this? Is this a joke? And actually, kind of, it is. <laughs> so we haven't seen any gameplay. Even though they're calling the latest trailer a gameplay trailer, it's, it's not gameplay. Even if any of those clips are from real gameplay, they're so short and curated and stripped down that it's not really representative of anything. 
There's no fixed release window for Fable, but I can't imagine it being pushed much further. They've been hyping it up for so long. I imagine Fable will be a 2024 game, but of course it could be delayed. But if it does get released, it will make news waves for sure. A return to a long-standing series, but it's going to be contentious considering how much of a deviation it is from people's expectations. Either way, the news of Fable through 2024 will be interesting, and I can't wait to see with my eyes what we hear with our ears. Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it'd be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Thank you! Also, if you think you can predict the future better than I can, make sure you comment below. Alright, next game. Stormgate. Yes, the next biggest RTS on the horizon. So, just for reference, it takes about $100 million for a game to be considered a AAA game in terms of their budget. Stormgate, at the time of recording, has about 30 to 40 million. So, although Stormgate is feeling like a AAA attempt at a game, it is actually not even half of the budget of a AAA game yet. Stormgate has been running some early tests and demos and will be entering early access towards the middle of 2024. So although it's not a full release in 2024, I'm still going to put this here as one of the biggest games for the year, because this is from ex-Blizzard devs. When they say early access, they generally mean the game is, like, it's done. <laughs> it's a fully fleshed out game. And so far, people are very hyped, very excited for this new RTS, which sort of feels like part StarCraft, part Warcraft, part Diablo in terms of its theme and gameplay. By all accounts, they're promising to be a next-gen real-time strategy game in a science fantasy universe, and they want to have everything, an extensive, meaningful single-player campaign, skirmish versus AI, co-op or competitive gameplay in multiplayer, 1v1s, 3v3s, get creative in the editor, they want this to be the future of RTS, whether you're a single player, solo, offline player, or a esports competitor. This is supposed to be something for everyone, a social RTS and for the loners. And the fact that they want to do everything is the most concerning part. Stormgate wants to be everything. So how do you be everything without sacrificing one of the other things? Especially when they don't, at the moment, have a triple A budget. They did have a Kickstarter and they raised a couple million, which is great. So they've got a lot of money, but a lot of money is not a lot of money in the gaming industry. There are games costing $300 million out there. Stormgate is like 10% of that budget right now. I think they're looking to enter early access and through early access continue to raise funds and eventually Stormgate will fully develop into everyone's dream. At least that's the goal. And they might be able to pull it off. They have the pedigree, they have the experience, they seem to have a good game coming together and the initial demo during Steam Next Fest has got a lot of people hyped. They seem to be enjoying it. But I'm not sure, like just looking at the game, I'm not sure whether it feels like it's clicking quite yet whether it's like actually hitting that right note. It feels like a little sharp or a little flat at the moment. And it seems like they've got these kinks to work out, even if it's not about the gameplay, about the vibe in terms of hooking people in. I feel just personally that it's not quite there yet, but it's like skirting. It's skirting the edge of greatness. Of course, everyone's watching Stormgate, and it's probably going to be one of the biggest games of 2024, even though it's not technically fully releasing until next year. I expect the player base to go quite high, because of course everyone's been waiting for StarCraft 3, and they're never going to make that, as far as I can tell. Not when a single microtransaction in World of Warcraft made more money than StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty. A single mount made more money than an entire AAA game. It's hard to blame publishers for not investing in RTS, because it's not about making money, it's about making all the money. And always remember, when it comes to choosing what game to fund, if you have a game that's going to make $2 million, and another game that's going to make $1 million, a publisher wouldn't look at the $1 million game as, hey, we could make a million dollars on this. No, they'll say, if we make this game, we're going to lose a million dollars, because if we made the other game, we would have made two million dollars. 
And that's why big publishers generally don't fund RTS anymore, because they're just not that profitable. So Stormgate is going to be interesting because it's supposed to be free to play, so how are they going to make the money? We'll see how it all comes together around the middle of 2024 when Stormgate enters early access. Okay, this next game isn't really a prediction. PAL World. So PAL World entered early access in January 2024, and it became the biggest game on Steam. It broke Steam records. And if you haven't heard, this game is basically Pokemon, but it's a survival open world crafting game, but also it's realistic in the sense where you can enslave the pals, you can put them to work, you can force them into indented servitude, you can even capture humans in the... Well, they're not called Pokeballs, but they're Pokeballs. You can capture humans in them and enslave humans. Like, it's... It's a grim sort of reality of what humans would really do if Pokemon existed in real life. But, you know, Pal World became insanely successful. I mean, it's got over 200,000 user reviews at the time of recording at 94% positive. It's 1% away from being overwhelmingly positive on Steam. So it's already a massive success. And I don't think anyone was predicting Pal World would blow up quite that big. Especially considering Pocket Pair, the developers, have made these sorts of games before. They have Craftopia, which is still in early access. It entered early access in 2020 and had some success, but it seems like they just sort of decided to make another game at the same time. It's not like Craftopia is abandoned, but now with Pal World basically becoming 10 times, literally more than 10 times as popular as Craftopia, obviously the focus is gonna be on Pal World. So you'll see Craftopia reviews tanking into the mostly negative. Not necessarily because it's a bad game, but it's been in four years in early access and it's never been finished. So Pal World is another one that's not fully releasing in 2024, and it might not fully release ever, but it is already one of the biggest games of the year. And if you jump in, just keep in mind that what the game is right now is what you should expect to get from it. Don't count on it ever getting better or being released fully or anything like that. It might someday, but don't count on it. If you get into Pal World now, then Pal World now is what you're getting into, okay? But yeah, it's just factual at this point that Pal World is one of the biggest games of 2024 and actually one of the biggest games ever. I've been listing it for years in the upcoming survival games lists and yeah, it, it had promise. But no one, I think, expected it to be this much of a hit. Alright, next is the next Supergiant Games game, Hades 2. Supergiant Games made the fantastic action RPGs Transistor and Bastion. And of course, Hades 1, which was massively successful. So of course, Hades 2 looks gorgeous. It's gonna play fantastically. Supergiant Games does what Supergiant Games does. And Hades 2 is entering early access in quarter two of 2024. So it's not fixed for a full release in 2024, but early access is definitely starting based on what they're saying anyway. They say the full 1.0 release of Hades 2 is not confirmed. They're still figuring it out and it'll probably depend on how well the early access is received we can expect it to be a success either way. I mean, what we've seen so far already looks amazing, and fans of Supergiant type of games will definitely jump onto this one. Considering it's entering early access in quarter two, there's actually still plenty of time for it to fully release in 2024, but whether it does or not, I'm confident Hades 2 will be one of the biggest hits this year. When it finally fully releases, whether it's next year or not, I think everyone will be like, well, we've been playing it. Of course, it's it's great, I'm sure. It just gets slightly better from it already being great. I don't think Supergiant Games has missed ever, at least not in recent years. I mean, every time I play their games, it feels really good, really nice. They don't typically do sequels, so it'll be interesting to see how they move forward with Hades 2. It's an action RPG roguelike roguelite kind of game that has great art. Typically they have great stories, great music as well. So you can look forward to Hades 2. So earlier I was talking about AAA games budgets and them being hundreds of millions of dollars. So here is Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Final Fantasy 7 
is probably the most recognizable Final Fantasy. I know there's a lot of Final Fantasy games out there. Some people say 9 is their favorite, some people say 6, some people say 8. But Final Fantasy VII was sort of the most iconic Final Fantasy, probably because it was the first fully 3D one. And in 1997, those graphics were next gen, and it sort of established Final Fantasy as the best looking game whenever a Final Fantasy released. So Final Fantasy VII, the remake, has been going very well. So what they've done is Final Fantasy VII, the remake, has been split to three parts. And essentially, this is the second part. So it's not really a new new game, but also they're sold separately. So it's kind of a weird situation. But basically, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a new release. And it's from the point where you leave Midgard and enter the open world. The first game in the remake was basically Midgard, going around the city. And the way they've done things is interesting. So it's called a remake, but they've changed a lot. Like, they've added stories, they've added characters, and they say they're not necessarily bound to what the original game's story was. So there is that Big spoiler point, which I'm not going to mention because some people never played the original and you don't mention it either. There's that big spoiler point and we don't actually know if big spoiler point is going to happen or not. And it'll be interesting to see which way they go with that. But either way though, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be massive. They've already shown off a lot of the gameplay of the open world and how it's going to change things up. The classic characters are back. There's Cloud, there's Sephiroth, there's Zack. You know the gist of that. And it's just going to be one of the biggest games of the year. It, it just, it will be. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, really. It's going to be one of the biggest games of the year. So yeah, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is releasing this month, actually, as I'm making this video in February. On the 29th of February 2024 is when this releases. So if you've been waiting for it, then you're going to get it. But it's been a while, so maybe recap the story of part one before you jump into this one. So I expect Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to just continue delivering on what people expect them to deliver. Next up we've got a Star Wars game, and those have been going quite well recently. This one is called Star Wars Outlaws. This is an action-adventure game, and they're saying this is the first ever open-world Star Wars game set between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So, I think that's just an excuse to use the term first ever, but sure. You'll be exploring distinct planets across the galaxy, both iconic and new ones, and you play K. Vess, a scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life, along with her companion, Nyx. You fight, you steal, you outwit your way through the galaxy's crime syndicates as you join the galaxy's most wanted. Basically, in traditional fashion, it feels like a space western and you're the outlaw. The anti-hero who goes around breaking the law but doing good, that sort of thing. This looks like a AAA big budget Star Wars game and it seems like it looks pretty good. I mean, the gameplay and story and cinematics they've all shown off so far look pretty amazing. And that's why I think this will be one of the biggest games of 2024. There just seems to be so much to it. And of course, I know a lot of people are burnt out on these kind of games. So you're going to see another, oh, another open world action adventure. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to have Detective Vision and Bandit Camps. Maybe, but that's what sells a lot of times. And the Star Wars games have been going pretty well recently. Star Wars Jedi Survivor sold well and was well reviewed. And I think they're working on a sequel to that one as well. But for 2024, we're gonna have Star Wars Outlaws. And you can see from the footage yourself whether this is something you want to be waiting for. It is supposed to be releasing in 2024, so we'll see exactly when that happens. Before we get to the final game on this list, I want to do 10 bonus mentions because Obviously, there's going to be more than 10 big hitters this year. These are just the 10 I think are going to be the biggest based on what we know right now. So here are 10 more games that may take off or I just want to mention them. First of all, Civilization 7. It's not officially announced yet, but I would put it in the top 10 if it was. We haven't seen anything of Civilization 7 and we don't really know much about it. We know they're working on it, and they might announce it in March for release in October. That's something they could do. That's what they did with Civ 6. They have like a middle of the year announcement and then it's out later that year. 
So we're all sort of trying to guess when Civ 7 is going to release. And of course, the new Civ game will be a big hit, whether it's good or not. It's just its pedigree will do that. Civ 7, if it's coming, it would be one of the biggest games. Skull and Bones. They're calling this a quadruple A game, you know, after all the triple A games, that's not enough. Quadruple A games, I guess it costs like 500 million or something. But it's been fraught with problems. It might take off if it gets everything fixed, but it's already competing with Sea of Thieves and it's been delayed so many times. It's hard to imagine Skull and Bones really overtaking what's already there, but it might do it. Dragon's Dogma 2. This is likely to be big and it's releasing soon, but I'm not sure if it's going to be one of the biggest games in the year. There's a lot of competition in the action adventure and action RPG realm and it will probably do well, but I'm not sure if it's going to blow up, blow up. Enshrouded. This is a recent survival game that blew up, kind of, recently alongside Pal World, but Pal World is still eclipsing it by a significant margin. And it's hard to see whether Enshrouded will actually pick up as it develops and somehow catch up to Pal World, or it's just going to be in the background. Homeworld 3. That has a lot to live up to, but it's the only AAA RTS fully releasing in 2024. So it might do well, but also Homeworld has more of a niche appeal. The slow spaceships and stuff like 3D space. New players tend to be a bit put off by that. It feels very complicated and fiddly. And also it was recently delayed a couple months and we're sort of waiting to see if they're gonna address all the concerns or how it'll be on release because we haven't seen anything about the single player campaign or skirmish or proper multiplayer and stuff. So there's still a lot to be seen for Homeworld 3. Even if it does well, I don't think it has the mainstream mainstream appeal that something like Stormgate would have. Tempest Rising. I want to mention this because of course a lot of people are looking at this spiritual successor to Command and Conquer. It may be the return of Command and Conquer. Not officially, but EA is not going to make another PC Command and Conquer game. Their mobile games are making too much. As in their mobile Command and Conquer games are making too much money. So I'm not sure whether Tempest Rising will really blow up. I don't expect it to blow up into the millions of players or anything like that, but it might do well, and of course I'm looking forward to it. Ark 2. Ark is a survival game that has science, technology, and dinosaurs, and the first game did sort of go viral, but it's always been a kind of bit of a mess, and Ark 2 will likely be a bit of a mess for years to come as well. Ark Survival Ascended released the last year, to mixed reviews and it's in early access to the end of 2024, so I don't see Ark 2 releasing in 2024 and competing with Survival Ascended. I feel like they want to finish Survival Ascended and then move to Ark 2, but also Survival Ascended is getting mixed reviews so they might just, you know, abandon that or something, it's hard to tell. But either way, Ark is always a bit of a mess, which sort of prevents it from becoming one of the biggest games of the year. Hollow Knight Silksong. There's no confirmed released window right now, and it's been delayed before, but Hollow Knight is such a popular and huge hitting Metroidvania. And the sequel Silk Song has been anticipated for years, and people are just waiting for it. And what we've seen so far looks great, but it's hard to tell whether it's going to be a 2024 game. It could easily be pushed into 2025 or even later. But if it does release this year, then it's going to be a massive hit. Crimson Desert. Everyone's talking about this when it comes to RPGs and there's an insane level of promise, but will it actually do it? Now it's supposed to release later this year sometime, but it could be delayed. Crimson Desert has been talked about for years, I've listed it as an upcoming game for years, and the trailers we've seen don't look like full-on actual raw gameplay. It's still very heavily curated. It might be real gameplay, but it's hard to tell whether it's just the best bits over a 10-hour gameplay session, and most of it is not like that. I still want to see much more of Crimson Desert first, and I'm not 100% confident that it will release in 2024. And I'm gonna mention The Sims 5. This has been teased for a long time from EA. There's no confirmed window, Probably not 2024, but there is a chance. But also, I should mention that Paralives, a new competitor to The Sims, is supposed to be releasing in 2025. And then Paradox has their own Sims competitor called Life by You, but that seems a little tentative considering how City Skylines 2 is going. So The Sims 5 
has its competition, but the competition seems to be floundering a little bit. So I'm not sure whether The Sims 5 will want to release this year or whether they're going to just take their time and maybe it'll be next year. But either way, it's not been fully revealed or confirmed any kind of release window. But I wanted to mention it because if The Sims 5 does release, of course, it's going to be one of the biggest games of the year. All right, then the 10th game I think will be a massive release in 2024, Black Myth Wukong. Now, I know there's a lot of skepticism about whether this game is actually going to release. Now, I'm mentioning it with some confidence because they have actually put a specific release date. It's not a release window, they've set it for the 20th of August 2024. This is an action RPG rooted in Chinese mythology, clearly about Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, and you explore the world fighting these fantastical bosses in action-packed combat, and it's kind of like a Dark Souls, but Asian, and it's Sun Wukong. So it looks phenomenal. What they've shown off so far looks amazing. And the hype for it, Black Myth Wukong has been massively hyped for years. I have listed it before in past years, and people are just so much into it based on what they've seen. If this game delivers what the trailers are showing, then it's gonna be absolutely massive. Though, of course, we're all still wondering, really 20th of August 2024? Is that really gonna release on that date? Always remember, a release date is not when a game is going to release. It's just a picture of a release date. It may release on the 20th of August 2024, but they could delay it. Having said that, August is not too far towards the end of the year. It's actually kind of the middle of 2024. So even if it does get delayed, it might still be this year. But for now, it's set for August and Black Myth Wukong is likely to be a huge explosion in gaming. Whether it delivers on its promises or not, it's gonna be a thing. There you have it. Press the like button and get games using the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Click the link and buy any game, it really does help. Also, thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. Join if you want your name on future videos. Don't miss the recent member and patron video as well. If you want to stay in the know for another genre, go to the next list video linked on screen, as I'm sure big gamers like yourself would not want to miss all the other amazing games in the other lists. This is just my top 10 pick, but of course there's hundreds more good games out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.